Hello and welcome back. This video is being prepared for Sunday, August 28, 2022. Our theme for today is, Am I a Jeremiah? Our first reading today is from the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of King Josiah, son of Ammon of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, son of Josiah of Judah, until the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And then selected verses from Jeremiah 2. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me? and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, and went after things that do not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this, be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. May God bless these readings to our living and to our understanding. This Sunday is my 64th birthday. I've been wondering this week whether we sing happy birthday because birthdays are naturally happy days or because they are difficult days in which we need the encouragement and support of the people around us and reminders that there are many reasons to be happy. I decided to call today's message, Am I a Jeremiah? Partly because it's fun to say, but it's a question that I've been asking myself this week, and it might be a question for you as well. Jeremiah responded to his call with doubt in his own ability. I'm only a youth. I don't know how to speak. But he also started with trust in God's challenge and promise. God said, don't say I'm only a youth. I will make you a prophet to the nations. I will put the words in your mouth. Jeremiah started out in an optimistic time when his people lived in relative peace under the rule of the Assyrians, but had to guide them through later times leading up to the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. Jeremiah was understandably gloomy sometimes. I am too, though it tends to be on days when no one is around. I tend to pull myself together for Sundays and meetings and other events. So, am I a Jeremiah? 
Jeremiah started his career in the period of faithfulness and reform during the reign of King Josiah, the good king, who tore down the altars of the Baals, repaired the temple, published the scroll of the law of Moses that was found in the temple during the repairs, and led the people in recovenanting with the God of Abraham and Moses and King David. I grew up in the 1960s and the 1970s among people who supported the ideas of peace, justice, human rights, and care of the environment. We wanted to worship and serve the one true God and believed that Christ was the way, the truth, and the life, so we were dedicated to seeking the truth, even if it brought us beyond our current understandings of faith and life. We believed in progress, social, moral, scientific, technological, historical, and cultural progress. We believed history moved forward and upward towards better times. During the career of Jeremiah, he mourned the death of King Josiah who died in battle against the army of Pharaoh Necho of Egypt and saw a new king appointed by Pharaoh Necho. He advised this new king as Pharaoh Necho was killed by the Babylonians in the Battle of Carchemish and saw a new king put on the throne in Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And he tried to guide and advise even as this new king turned back to Egypt for help, resulting in the Babylonian army returning and destroying the city and the temple. As I entered the ministry in the 1980s, I was aware that many churches in the United Church of Christ and in similar mainline denominations were in decline. The people who had grown up in the church in my generation had been taught to think for themselves and they tended to see confirmation as the time that they could begin to leave the church. Our churches tried to relearn the art of evangelism and church growth. I was part of various semi-successful programs in the conference and association levels, but many of our congregations have grown older and less strong, less able to reach out and serve, less able to tell our story in Christ's gospel in ways that are attractive to people beyond the church. This is partly because of cultural shifts. We no longer live life in a society where it is expected that people will be Christian and that they will attend church. Religion is seen as a choice. We ourselves are considerate of the beliefs of others not just because we are shy, but as a matter of principle. At the same time, other religious movements have been more willing to be aggressive and understood the necessity of changing hearts and minds. We don't just find church members, we create believers and invite them into fellowship. We are no longer the main line in terms of being dominant and having the ability to guide our society. We are still influential, and I believe that our values and our approach to faith are still essential to the good of our world in the long run. Jeremiah was gloomy at times. So am I, and you may be also. In the coming weeks, we'll have several readings from Jeremiah. I would like to look at the challenges our world faces and what the word of God in the words of the prophets may have to say to us and our world in our own time. But I would also like to consider how we can remain hopeful and constructive, even as we face great problems and even as we too are challenged by God's word. A starting point on this is to recognize that sometimes even the challenge that God's word brings is actually a word of hope and promise. From our call to worship this morning in Psalm 81, 
the Lord says, I am the Lord your God. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me and walk in my ways. I would feed you with the finest of the wheat. With honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. From the words of Jesus, the gardener said, dig around the roots of the unfruitful tree and put manure on it. Give it another year. And Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. And one of my favorite images in the Bible from Jeremiah. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The fountain of living water is like a spring that flows. It produces water. A cistern is a large water tank that simply holds the water that is available. The people had abandoned the flowing stream and they built cisterns that were cracked and did not hold water. God offers finest wheat and living water and wants to gather us and all people under God's wings. Yet we turn away, and so we go hungry, thirsty, and unprotected. God challenges us to listen to drink from God's flowing springs, to let ourselves be gathered. God's challenge is to receive and share God's gifts. I'd like to close today with a parable that's not in the Bible and with a poem. This parable is one that George McGarry posted on his Facebook page, a story an elderly woman had two large pots, each hung on the ends of a pole, which she carried across her neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. At the end of the long walks from the stream to the house, the cracked pot arrived only half full. For a full two years, this went on daily, with the woman bringing home only one and a half pots of water. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, but the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it could only do half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be bitter failure, it spoke to the woman one day by the stream. I am ashamed of myself because of this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your house. The old woman smiled. Did you notice that there are flowers on your side of the path, but none on the other pot's side? That is because I've always known about your flaw. So I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while we walk back, you water them. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the table. Without you being just the way you are, there would not be this beauty to grace the house. Each of us has our own unique flaws, but it's the cracks and flaws we each have that make our lives together interesting and rewarding. You've just got to take each person for what they are and look for the good in them. And to relate this to the cracked cisterns and the living water, since we are not perfect because we leak, we really need the living water. We can't depend just on a cracked cistern. 
As long as we have the flowing water, who we are is enough. I'd also like to share with you a poem called Fiddler Jones by Edgar Lee Masters. This is from a book called Spoon River Anthology, published in 1916. And the basic idea of the book is someone walking around in a graveyard. And each poem is the statement of the person that is buried in a particular place. And many of them are sad stories, stories of lives that did not work out well. But one of the happiest is Fiddler Jones. The earth keeps some vibration going there in your heart, and that is you. And if the people find you can fiddle, why, fiddle you must for all your life. What do you see, a harvest of clover, or a meadow to walk through on the way to the river? The winds in the corn, you rub your hands for beeves hereafter, ready to take to market or else you hear the rustle of skirts, like the girls when dancing at Little Grove. To Cooney Potter, a pillar of dust or whirling leaves meant ruinous drought. They look to me like redhead Sammy stepping it off to tour lure. How could I till my 40 acres, not to speak of getting more with a medley of horns, bassoons, and piccolos stirred in my brain by crows and robins and the creak of a windmill, only these. And I never started to plow in my life. That someone did not stop by the road and take me away to a dance or a picnic. I ended up with 40 acres. I ended up with a broken fiddle and a broken laugh, and a thousand memories, and not a single regret. Am I a Jeremiah? Are you a Jeremiah? God can use us with our imperfections by letting us be who we are. Let us pray. A loving God, we thank you for the words of Jeremiah the words that he spoke to his own time that still speak to our own day. We thank you for the challenge that comes from Jeremiah and that comes from Jesus to accept what God offers, the gifts and the guidance. Help us to have the courage to see what is happening around us in the world and the wisdom to understand it. Help us to find the joy and the faith and the love to remain hopeful, to remain constructive, to remain loving in the face of all that we see. We thank you for each other. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go forth in the name of God who offers so much. In the name of Jesus, who tells us about what God offers. In the name of the Holy Spirit that brings so many gifts. Amen. Thank you. We'll see you next week.